Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of my new podcast, Hiring and Inspiring, a show where I talk all things sales, recruitment, business, leadership, personal development, and pretty much everything in between. Now, today, I've got a guest on the show, an old friend of mine, Joel McLean, uh, joins me today. Um, Joel, as I said, is an old friend. We originally met in, uh, we actually met in a gym uh, back when I was living in Sydney. Um, I became friends and yeah, sort of stayed in touch. Uh, Joel's a really interesting chap. He's, um, I guess, his background, his work history is in the, in the fitness industry. Uh, and I know most recently, you know, he's been uh, embarking on on some studies. So uh, he's uh, a chap who is always, um, oh, he's he's always got a lot of value to add to any conversations. He's got a high level of sort of emotional intelligence, I would say, and um, I always enjoy catching up with him and, and having a chat with him. So I'm looking forward to, you know, finding out maybe a bit more about Joel, some stuff I didn't know about, uh, and, you know, for, for him to, to share his uh, his wisdom and his uh, and his journey. So, mate, Joel, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, mate. Um, thank you so much for the lovely introduction. I'm like, oh, I'm starting to blush, but <laughs> <laughs> no, mate, but yeah, um, no, good catching up with you. Um, when I saw that, mm. you know, you started up this podcast, I was like, oh, how good. I love to waffle on, so why not catch up with Joe at the same time? <laughs> yeah, no, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, so look, mate, it's been, we probably haven't seen each other for a couple of years now, I'd mm. say. Pre-pandemic, um, I think, oh no, I think we went for a bush war. I think that yeah. was pre-pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe that was in, that was sort of when the pandemic was sort of kicking off, or we you know, yeah. did a few things, but you couldn't, I can't remember, there was a few sort of, I think it was maybe 2020, 2021 maybe. Yeah, yeah um, around then. But I do remember at that time you were quite sort of you just started your you'd gone you'd gone back to to uni right I think you had just started your your studies um, mm-hmm. how's that been going how's that been going in the like maybe a couple of years since yeah so I think it must have been twenty twenty because I'm getting a, a flashback from the bush walk and I think it was I just gotten accepted so it was maybe it was right, the end yeah. of the year okay yeah. okay yeah it's a bit of a gray area I think that period but yeah in um, two thousand twenty one I went back to uni um, okay so. Uh, originally, I um, I got accepted to do a dual degree at Macquarie University to do cognitive and brain science and psychology. Right. Um, so I started off doing that for the first year um, and learnt a lot during the first year, I think, also um, obviously about the, the field that I'm in, but also about myself with study. I'm trying to balance that with work too, since I'm living out of home at the moment, mm-hmm. full-time study um, while trying to pay bills, obviously, can be a bit of a juggle. Um, but kind of found a new passion during my studies as well because uh, by the end of that year I actually have transferred out of psychology and into IT so yeah a little bit of a different faculty now but a bit of a new direction new career path I've come kind of uh, envisioned for myself and now Mm. cognitive and brain science and uh, bachelor of IT majoring in software technology okay so have you you you, you kept with the psychology stuff or are you purely focusing on IT is it now both so now it's cognitive and brain science. So I think the the main the easiest way to differentiate the two. Yeah. So cognitive and brain science is actually a brand new degree at Macquarie University. It's the only okay, one yep. in Australia that offer it as an undergraduate degree. Yeah. So with CBS, um, it's purely focusing. Uh, you still have to do some basic level introductory uh, introduction to psychology units. So mm-hmm. um, obviously you've got the zoomed out version psychology mainly focusing on human behavior um, yep. but i'm zooming in a little bit more in terms of cognition so uh things like focusing on memory focusing on attention focusing on language you know all those things that have to go on in the brain uh, simultaneously to be able to produce something yeah, right. um and then also zooming in all the way to what makes a neuron fire so yeah. being able to go down to the molecular level of the brain and understanding its functions and its structure yeah. as well Oh, that sounds super interesting to be honest. But what, what kind of stuff have you learned? Uh, a range of things. So when we first went in, we had to do neuroscience, which essentially is just learning about um, a neuron, learning yeah. about the the way that uh, a neuron will convey information. So learning about the ins and outs of an action potential. Um, we then have to like also zoom out a little bit, understanding about motor control, uh, understanding about vision is a lot of time spent there. Uh, yeah. Then we also have learned different parts of the brain and its function. So um, learning about the different lobes. So you've got frontal lobe, parietal, occipital, yeah. temporal, learning about mainly um, you know, what 
what the areas in the brain are responsible for and when they will fire given certain situations. Mm. Uh, we also learn a lot about um, the methods that we use to actually measure that because um, you know, it's all well and good if the neuron fires during a task, but it's kind of understanding why does it fire. So there's a lot yeah. of critical thinking involved. There's a lot of, you know, just because of extracted data, that's great, but what does that actually mean converting that to useful information that we can kind of determine whether or not it's um, correlational or causation, um, understanding the difference between the two as well, you know, whether or not something's associated with it um, yeah. or whether or not it's actually causing something is completely different. So we kind of go down a lot of that rabbit hole, but essentially the brain is everything. So think about hearing all the senses. Um, so hearing, sight, they're the main ones, motor control. Um, you've also got um, touch, but then you've got where your body is in space as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot kind of going on obviously with the brain, right? It's trying to converge everything to be able to create the experience that we're that we've got and yeah. to navigate the environment too. So, um, yeah, yeah there's definitely oh, cool. uh, a lot in there, but it's trying to condense it down into special, like specific areas, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned about, you know, you found a, a new passion and, you know, within with the IT stuff, how, how, how did that develop and, and how's that all going? Yeah. So, um, funny enough, I, for the cognitive and brain science degree, you have to do fundamentals of computer science. No, sorry. Okay. I just, yeah, foundations, and essentially just entry-level computer programming, just basic coding. Right, yeah. And um, it was one of the first times that I've done coding. I think in the past, I used to think that to do coding, you'd have to be very smart, very intelligent. You know, that's yeah. way out of my league. I'm not that, I'm not that <laughs> smart, right? <laughs> Um, and then I learned that no, actually like most of the time it's looking at a line of code and just trying to figure out why isn't this working and nine times out of 10, it's because I didn't put a semicolon at the end. Okay. So it's, it's, it was, um, it was, it was a really funny kind of experience for me to go through, to learn the, the fundamentals of it. And it was just something I fell in love with because, um, for the assignment we had to make just a super basic, uh, space invaders game. Yeah. Um, it was due in like week 10. Um, I finished it in week four just because I had blinkers on and I was like, it just yeah. amazed me. Um, and by the end of it, when I kind of got a better understanding of coding and I finished the assignment and I was playing this little game that I created, I couldn't believe that I made this through code. That was mm -hmm. all it was. Um, and it kind of made me think about, well, what is coding? And then I had a light bulb moment is, um, coding is whatever I want it to be. So mm. I think it was more the power of coding, the power of computation that really sparked a lot of curiosity. It's like, well, if coding is whatever I, I can make it, then yeah. what can I make? Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's from all I hear about coding, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I, I hear it's just a great skill to learn and a great skill to have. I was always the same a little bit. I thought, you know, you have to be super smart. To, to be able to do it, but well, it sounds like, uh, not, not necessarily. <laughs> um, so that, that's, that's really cool. Mate. So where, where is this sort of all going? How, how much study have you got left? Where are you sort of hoping to, to go with these sort of two, you know, the, these two areas of your interest that you're, you're going down? Yeah, there's a few, um, a few areas I think I can take it down. Um, I think the goal long term, I'd love to get into a field called computational, uh, neuroscience. Okay. Um, that's more of a long-term vision. I'd have to do a little bit more post-grad stuff to be able to get there. Um, and, you know, we'll just see how that goes. Um, alternatively, after I finish maybe both uh, bachelors, maybe even data science, um, you know, if I just need to earn a bit of income, that's kind of the directions yeah. I'm going in. I don't really have anything set in stone. I've just more got, I like having options, you know, which mm -hmm. avenue can I take this? And then um, obviously, just making sure I give my all in my studies, learn as much as I can while yeah. I'm here, focus on that, and then you know, have a bit of a direction on the map, but not be set in stone with these are the steps I need to take. Yeah, always a bit risky, I find, to just be like, right, this is 100% what I'm doing, and if I'm going to do it by this time point, then if you don't do it, you always feel a bit disappointed, or, or you know, it's Completely good, I think, agree. as you say, to, to have, um, you know, to keep, keep your options open there. So, how, sorry, time wise, how much more study have you got? Like, how much? Oh, uh, yeah. So, I'm entering in my third year. Um, so with a dual degree, it's normally four years. 
Mm. Um, but I've decided now to reduce my workload. So instead of doing four units a semester, I'll be doing three. Okay. Um, which is actually recommended to me by one of the professors. And it made a lot of sense because essentially said that it gives you more time to be able to focus on the study that you're doing, yeah. learn it properly and don't feel as overwhelmed. Um, and it's only extended my degree out an extra year. So uh, now instead of another two years, I've got another three years. Right, okay. Um, I've got a lot more time on my hands, which also makes me, also enables me to be able to work a bit more mm -hmm. and a little bit more income at the same time. So I'm not kind of dog paddling around. Yeah, gotcha. One question I was thinking about. So when I think we, we, we last caught up, you were obviously going to, about to do the study. And I think you were working quite a lot of the time or maybe full time. Mm -hmm. You were like, I'm not sure how I'm going to go sort of going back to university, back into sort of study as my focus. I mean, I think you know, personally, if I, I, I work full time, if I was I, my university days were years ago, to, the thought of going back to university, just sort of getting my brain in that sort of study mode. I'm not sure how I'd cope. H how have you found that, like going back into study mode? Yeah, to be honest, I um, picked it up pretty quickly. Like, yeah. I don't think it was... Um... It was as hard as what I was kind of thinking. Um, yeah. I think maybe the biggest thing was just the, probably the hard, the hardest part really was meshing with people that are a bit younger than me. Okay, um, yeah. In saying that, like I wasn't much older than them, but I was just that little bit older where there started to be a bit of a generational difference. So yeah. um, that became slightly evident, but also like, now, there was also a lot of cool people there that were even older than me, people in the right, 40s right. as well. I've been a lot of interesting people that have all been on different journeys. So whilst that's the majority, it's maybe 70% of the cohort, there was still like a lot of people, even like myself, that have gone back to uni or this is their first degree, but they're a bit older. So um, I definitely wasn't alone in that, which was good. Um, in terms of getting into the routine, though, um, I would find that I was much better this time around than I've ever done study because... I gave it yeah. the, th the proper forethought and the, the, I suppose, respect of this is going to take up a lot of time. Uh, this is going to be challenging and I'm going to have to really try. Whereas in the past, was, I'd treat it a bit like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I'll just rock up to some lectures, take some notes. Like, I'll be yeah. able to wing it. You know, I'll be able to get through. I'll be able to, get, you know, I'll be able to pass. But I've definitely changed my tune a bit where yeah. instead of going for the pass, now I'm trying to go for the distinction, trying to mm. aim to, you know, commit a little bit more, achieve a bit more um, and dedicate yeah. myself a bit more to the process. Yeah, I guess maybe because you're a bit older and then it was also your choice to go back into to study, right? So you were like, for sure. I chose to do this, so I'm not sort of, I may as well give it my all rather than half ass it. But you know, For sure. Maybe, I don't know, students who go to uni at maybe 18, 19, they're just sort of there because they don't know what else to do. So they're just sort of um, doing it for the sake of it, I guess. I don't, that was me anyway. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm, no, I definitely think um, – because I've dropped out of uni. This is, funnily enough, uh, this is my third time back at uni. I don't like telling people that. Mm -hmm. um, I've dropped out of uni twice, and mm -hmm. I was really scared that it would happen again. Um, but purely because the first time around was I went straight from high school into uni because that's yeah. what the careers advisor told me to do. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, you know, at the time I was like, I kind of like psychology. I did sports psychology as a unit, so I guess mm. I'll do that. Yeah. And um, just wasn't prepared for the difference between school and uni. Um, so after that, you know, it was just, I would just work for a bit and I kind of, you know, floated around and did that. And then as I got back into PT, I was like, okay, I'm really passionate about this. I want to go back to, to uni because I think I can make this my career. Yeah. Um, but at that time it was the lesson there was more time management too was um trying to run a business while going to uni it's probably not a smart idea so i learned yeah, more right. trying to have um a focus trying to have a goal trying to have one thing that is your main like um i suppose objective dedicate mm -hmm. most of your time to that and then figure out a way to kind of support that process yeah so you reckon you were maybe juggling a few too many things previously yeah, I look back and I was setting myself up for disaster. Um, yeah. I was running like three sessions a day for my boot camp. Would have to try and like move clients around depending on classes. Was constantly driving around. Um, yeah. Was literally starting assignments 48 hours before they were due. And I still did quite well in some of the units. I did a lot better this time than the first time. Yeah. But it just came down to the common denominator of I just didn't have the time to really dedicate myself to the studies. Yeah. Oh, you know, lessons learned by the sound of things, you know, yeah. you, you, one of those things you sort of had to go through and it sounds like you've, you know, this time around, um, making it work. So mate, I'm um, yep. good, good on you. Thank you. So let's, um, mate, I, I want to talk a bit about 
how we, I guess we met, you know, your, your, your past and background in the, the fitness industry. Um, you touched upon it a little bit then when you ran your PT business. What, where does this, where does that all sort of sit with where your sort of head's at now? Is that something that's in the past or is that is still something that you're looking to, um, you know, p- pursue in, in the future? Yeah, honestly, I have no idea. It's mm. the, it's something that I think, I, to be honest, I thought after I had left Jets when, uh, when we met at the gym, when I was um, doing group training and still a little yeah. bit of PT then, I actually thought I'd be done with the fitness industry, but here I am a couple of years later and I'm back doing personal training and gr- even group training as well back at the yeah. Macquarie University gym. So, um, yeah, it was, it was quite funny. Just the opportunity was presented to me and um, I thought I'd give it a go, you know, something to support my studies, but, mate, I've been loving it as well, getting back into right, okay. it. So it's still something that I'm quite passionate about. Um, in terms of incorporating it all, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Um, I've thought about it, obviously, with IT, it is what I make it, right? So in terms of being able to make, obviously, applications about health and wellness, they're still quite big at the moment, but I feel like there's something missing in the market in terms of someone being able to have a, a good application where, you know, you're surrounded by... Um, so I think you've got Santa. I used that for a little bit, tested that out by... Um, what's the act? Is it... Who's... Um, Thor, what's his name? Uh, Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's him and his trainer yeah. that kind of put that together. Yeah. It was really cool. I liked that style of training. I'm definitely more into the functional side of things myself. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it just, I'm not sure what it is now, but it just felt like there was a lack of a community involved. So you know, okay. still having a fitness platform that's built with community, but then it's also built with wellness as well. So mindfulness, because yeah. obviously stress management is a huge part of health and wellness and which goes under fitness right yeah um you know trying to incorporate those things too so um you know i think it's something i can incorporate with something i'm definitely not closed on the idea of either um but yeah it just kind of depends on yeah sure i get it what uh yeah what avenue i choose to go down how did you originally get into actually that fitness industry yeah 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 um well when so let me backtrack so when I dropped out of uni when I was 18, pretty much I was just working at Subway. Um, I was playing a lot of American football as well. Um, yeah. That was pretty much my like my main, um, what would you call it? My main focus, really. It was just American football, playing footy. Yeah. I loved it. Um, but then during the season when I was 19, I want to say, no, sorry, 18 at the end of the year, um, I broke my leg. So breaking my leg... Um, uh, I had some, I had some complications too. I developed something called compartment syndrome. Um, so instead of just having to pin the bone for the broken leg for the tibia, um, they also had to cut down the sides of my leg and put some drains in my leg to drain fluid because essentially I had a circulation problem where uh, the blood could pump to my leg, but it couldn't come back up. So yeah, okay. they had to operate on that. And that obviously kind of delayed the, um, the healing process quite a bit. Um, so I was kind of, um, in a state for probably, I'd say a year after that, I ended up moving to Sydney, uh, ended up going to TAFE. I did, uh, advanced diploma in property valuation, but, um, just because of my broken leg, I was just gaining weight, gaining a lot of weight. Um, just because yeah, okay. I couldn't really move, um, running still hurt. I think at that time I had about four surgeries on the leg. Um, so yeah, it was, um, pretty tough at that point in time. And then um, someone I was working with, um, I don't know if you ever met him, but Tom, he was a manager at Jets in Neutral Bay at the time, uh, or um, when I was working at Jets. Yeah. He, um, we used to work together at the Athlete's Foot, and then one day uh, he said to me, he's like, hey, mate, I'll train you, because um, I would always talk about, oh, I want to lose weight, I'm, si- you know, I'm sick of being fat, I'm sick of you know, having these extra kilos, it's just, there's nothing wrong with that, and I look back and there's nothing wrong with me being that, it's just I didn't want that for myself. Yeah, you know, okay. I, I felt like I could, um, I've always wanted to get fit. I've always, you know, aspired to be if, um, you know, someone strong, someone that can be cardio fit as well. At that time, I just yeah. never really had that. Um, and yeah, he just pretty much gave me the, the option. He's like, I will train you for free. You come in and jump yeah. in on my sessions. But if you 
um, don't show up three times, then like we're not training together. So he gave me the rundown from the start. These are requirements. You will come to every session and I'll tell you what yeah. to do. You'll either train with me or I'll give you something else to do. And when I first started, it was just super light because I couldn't do much with my leg. Um, so it was like, go on the bike, go on the rower, just do something super simple for the first three months. It wasn't anything crazy. Like, you know, mm. I'm going into the gym and I'm doing crazy hit sessions. It was mm. like, no, just rock up to the gym, just go on to the bike, do what you can. Mm. That was it. Um, and then just get the ball moving, get a bit of momentum. hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, build a, build a bit of momentum. And then, um, I think at that time it was 110 kilos when I first started. Um, on a lot more body fat and a lot less muscle mass than what I am now as well. Um, and yeah, eventually it's just like, okay, cool. Now we're going to start doing this. Now we're going to start doing this and slowly, but surely we started doing, um, more and more and more. And then the weight started kind of dropping and dropping, even though at the time I still couldn't run. Um, and then by, I think about, I don't know how long we were training for together. I want to say maybe nine months, but I think it was about almost two years, a year and a half since the surgery. Um, we got a snapshot of me running across a footy field. I was able to hit yeah. full flight into a sprint, back running again um, after about, yeah, like I said, nine months of training. And from there, kind of really fell in love with fitness for what it did for me because obviously, yeah. it, you know, my physical health drastically improved. I had one doctor that said to me, um, a surgeon actually that, you know, cause I was like, oh, I'm in pain all the time, blah, 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 blah. And he's pretty much tried to refer me to pain management and said, mate, this is probably something you're going to have to live with for the rest of your life. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that was a mistake on his end. I don't think he should have really told a 19 year old that, <laughs> you no. know, that yeah. this is something that you've got forever. Um, so yeah, just built on that anyway. Mm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like I said, I've kind of fell in love with fitness for what it did for me because not only was it my physical health though, but mainly it was my mental health because that was one of the first big things in my life that I felt like I achieved something meaningful, uh, meaningful yeah. to me, meaningful to even other people around me because I felt my mind, uh, my mind kind of shift in terms of, you know, I can do something. If I put my mind to it, I most definitely can achieve yeah. what I want to achieve. It's just, I need to put in the work and I need to be willing yeah. to work for it. Um, and from there, yeah, it was just, I think Tom and I, we did our kind of certs together. Um, he um, was qualified in New Zealand, but had to do it over in Australia to kind of get the tick of approval for insurance companies over here. And yeah. we did it together and yeah, ended up running my own boot camp and running, going through a few gyms, did yeah. a few PT at a few gyms and whatnot. But yeah, that's how I kind of yeah. got into it. Oh man, that's great. That's great. Um, just actually a question. So what what made you sort of like so i so i'm thinking about myself like, i love fitness i love training the gym i love playing sports but i've never really had the mindset to like i don't know i, I, I never wanted to work in the industry i never wanted to like train other people mm. like uh, I, I don't know that that's just me obviously but like what mm. was it for you that kind of made you actually wanted to work in the industry or just you know even help other people yeah good question i think it was more like i could see the impact that it had on me and i was like man everyone needs to get on this <laughs> and yeah. obviously i think at a time I, I definitely think a lot differently now to what I did then. Um, there's a few things I think I've kind of evolved to change my mindset on, but at the time it was just, just that it was like, this is the best medicine I've ever had. Mm. This is the best remedy. This is the best thing that you can do. Yeah. Um, and I want other people that were in the same position as me because I could see a lot of the, a lot of even like, um, young men in my position that felt, um, you know, that maybe played a bit too many video games or you know, right, it's yeah. a little bit too leth um, lethargic to go off the couch or just unsure of themselves in the gym felt like they're the ones that stick out like a sore thumb. It's like, n no, like go to the gym. You, you will feel better. You will gain so much from it. Um, so I think that was why I decided to get in just because I wanted to kind of help those that were in a similar position yeah. to where I was. Yeah. No, no, I'll get it. Um, so, Working in the fitness industry, like it's obviously it is a it's a really I always think it's quite a unique, you know, sort of space to be. And what what did you learn from it? Like what kind of lessons mm. have you learned from the industry? A lot, mm. a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, from being just in the industry, um, not running a bit from not from a running my own business perspective, but just being around yeah. fitness. Um, probably the biggest one was interpersonal communication was. 
I thought I was quite good at talking to people until um, being a PT because PT you get to know people quite well, um, sure. even group training, and you get a lot of people opening up to you about different things as well. And mm. sometimes I'd be stumped on how to respond to that. Um, right, yeah. I think there's a lot of trust that people put into you as a personal trainer, and it's kind of your responsibility to be able to help them out as much as you can. Um, and obviously, I think a lesson I had to learn as well was that you can only do so much. I only have the facilities. I only have so much ca um, capacity to be able to help people. You know, yeah. I'm not a, a trained psychologist. I'm not. A, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not all these things, right? Um, I'm there to help mainly. At the end of the day, trying to get you motivated to try and mm -hmm. improve yourself in the gym, which no one likes doing either. And not many people, when they're first starting yeah. out, really love the gym from the very start. Um, yeah. sometimes it's a chore. I'm sure you know as well, Joe, um, of the, the years of training. Like sometimes you're just like, man, I do not want to go to the gym, but you've mm. still got to go for that consistency. You can't just skip a day just cause you don't feel like it. Cause it's mm. easy to do then. Oh, I don't feel like it tomorrow either. Uh, you know what? I might go today, but I'll do a cruisy session and then yeah. you, you start to kind of taper off. So trying to find that balance, achieve that balance. But, um, yeah, so obviously learning to talk to people, how to talk to people, learning yeah. what motivates people is a really big thing as well. Um, learning the difference between something that's going to motivate someone for the long term versus short term. Um, and also just general wellness. So being in the fitness industry, I learned a lot from a lot of different people in terms of I learned things from bodybuilders. I've learned things from powerlifters. I've learned things from yogis. I've learned yeah. things, you know, that are people from a holistic health kind of th um, industry, nutritionists I've been around, even um, other coaches that are a little bit more mindset, a little bit more yeah. counseling. Um, you know, there's been a lot of kind of field. It's a very diverse field because obviously helping a person on a holistic level requires a lot of different um, disciplinaries. So, yeah. So, yeah, I've never really thought about it too much, but like, you had to be, as a, as a PT, say, um, such a chameleon as in terms of one minute you're speaking to someone who has, you know, has one kind of certain communication style, or they might have, then, then next time you're talking to someone else who talks completely differently and they might have completely different goals or mindsets. So you have to, mm. I could be wrong here, but like you could, you just have to constantly adapt and switch up and, and, and learn your, your, your different sort of styles for different people. Is that right? Yeah, most definitely. So I think, um, you know, being able to identify quite quickly what type of personality trait I'm dealing with by dealing with someone that's um, a little bit more direct, that's straight to the point. If I'm yeah. dealing with someone that's very direct and I'm here being, you know, wishy-washy, saying a lot of things, yeah, um, you know, yeah, trying yeah. to you know, get them motivated, or, you know, without kind of being like, this is what you need to do, this is where you need to be, and this is what I require from you, perfect, done. Whereas, you know, if someone comes in that's a little bit more of a bubbly personality and I'm just being direct, this is what you need to do, this is this, you listen to me and do that, mm -hmm. they're going to be a bit like, oh, that was a bit that was a bit flan. So, or on, on the other side, someone that's a little bit more reserved, someone that's a bit nervous. And I'm going in there with either, either of those energies, either yeah. direct or either, you know, that kind of bubbly personality that's going to be too much for them. So then I have to yeah. be a little bit more reserved myself, watch my tone, watch my body language, you know, just communicate with them softly. Yeah. Um, yeah, just being able to adapt quite quickly in those situations, but also quickly identifying what type of personality I'm dealing with too. Yeah. Um, so gotcha. yeah, definitely something that was quite important. Yeah, gotcha. Something I've also wondered about working in the fitness industry, like how did it affect your own training or like your own like fitness goals? Because you know, you, you obviously you're, you're in the industry all the time. You're working, you're training other people. Can it affect your own motivation or can it affect or does it affect how, how you train? Did it help? Did it like make it worse? Like what, how did that Yeah, work? yeah, good question. I think it kind of, the question is, uh, so the answer is it, for me anyway, it depends. Um, mm. There were times where I felt like I was training just because I had to train to be a personal trainer. Like I had to put the front on and make sure that I was an example. Oh, really? Yeah, definitely. That That's was interesting, a, yeah. That was a big motivator of, I thought like people that won't respect me kind of thing. If yeah, I'm not, for sure, then, for sure. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, I'm honest about now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm probably not in as good a shape as what I was back in the day. Um, I was definitely a lot fitter, but it was funny how even I was a lot fitter then, I couldn't recognize it that, hey, no, I, I can, like, I am fit. I can keep my own, I can hold my own. Yeah. Also, if I you know, eat a pizza, that doesn't make me, doesn't make me uh, a bad PT. Yeah. Uh, all, yeah. all these little things. So I think I fell in a rabbit hole at that point, but then, um, uh, on the flip side, it was quite good for my own goals because then um, sometimes it would be um, 
my, I suppose my own training, like I still made it work within my schedule. Um, I think that's the cool thing about being a PT is, you know, you've got access to a gym most of the time. If not, you've got some type of equipment. So, you know, whilst you might not be kind of training with the usual crowd, you tend to train when the gym's quiet. So, you know, that's quite nice. Yeah. So, you know, you've always got a, a nice gym to train in most of the time. Some trainers I know, they actually go, say, if I'm a PT at, um, crunch fitness i might have a membership at fitness first just so yeah, that right. way i can go have somewhere else that's not my workplace to train in so there are ways around it but it can definitely impact um your own training sometimes because obviously it's like you're constantly in that sphere constantly trying to i think mold people and help people in their own journey and then sometimes it's easy to neglect your own but then on the other side um you know it's sometimes you can spend a little bit more too much time or, you know, like I said, I put my energy probably into something that I shouldn't have instead of being like, I need to be this way because I'm a PT. It's like, no, this is yeah. my training for me. And this is what I want to do because, you know, this means X, Y, Z to me if I yeah. achieve that. So something I had to learn. I think I, was, I think a lot of young PTs go through that too. Um, I've been chatting with a few other trainers yeah, okay. um, at the gym I work at now. And we definitely agree when you're kind of young and coming up, it's quite intimidating too, when you're around a lot of vets, um, mm. a lot of the vets, I think could probably be a little bit more welcoming, not to say that they all aren't. It's just, it's a very, um, very, as you can imagine, can it be like cutthroat sometimes like PTs competing against each other in a gym for the clients and you know, yeah. you want to tread on people's toes. Is there a bit of that going yeah, on? Yeah, definitely. And that was never in my personality to be like that. I'm just yeah. not, um, the expression I used, um, to my mum when I finished my property valuation course and didn't pursue it was because I went for an interview and in the business world, uh, I think you've got to be, you got to be, I don't mean this in a bad way, but a shark, right? A shark goes in for the kill and it'll get it what it needs because it needs to, it needs to eat. And there's a lot of people that thrive in those situations and a lot of people that can do really well. But I find that I'm just too honest. And sometimes when it comes to a lot of sales and a lot of things like, you know, if you ask me a question and I don't believe like, you know, say I'm going to be the best trainer for you, or if there's another trainer that's going to be better according to your yep. goals, I'll be honest with you. You know, I don't want to stitch you up because I feel that I don't want to be stitched up myself. Yeah. Um, so I think that's uh, definitely a um, thing that held me back in that space sometimes, but depending on yeah. the gym culture is a big thing too. There's other mm -hmm. gyms when you start paying for rent and when you start to obviously like your income depends on how many clients you get. Yeah. People are just going to uh, be a lot more, a lot more ferocious going in for them. Yeah. Even, right. So um, yeah, it definitely can be quite competitive. And I think, um, you know, the fitness industry would do really well with some of the vets that come along helping the young pups as well. You know, how can I help you? What's something that you're struggling with? Or, you know, just tell me about what are you doing with the clients? What are you doing? How are you trying to get clients? You know, when you have a yeah. consult, what are you doing? You know, trying to help them, guide them along the way. I think that's something that the fitness industry would really benefit from. Not just sort of throwing it at the deep end, you know, if you go kind of thing. Sorry, I think you just um, so like, for a second. Not, yeah, not just throwing them in at the deep end and just kind of sink or swim. Yeah, yeah, and it can, definitely feels like a, um, a lot of the time. However, there are avenues that you can take. Like I think if you, if I was a new PT today, I'd probably go get starting a job at Vision Personal Training. They are quite good. I worked there for a little bit, but because I was, um, I'd already run my own business at that point. Going, it felt like I'm going back a fair yeah, few fair. steps, and it was hard for me to kind of fully commit to that role. Um, yeah. I, I definitely think there's avenues to take. It's just um, a lot of the time I think people think, I know, especially PTs, you know, do Cert 3, Cert 4, and you know, I'll go work for a gym and everyone will just want to start training with me. And, yeah, it's not quite like that, the PT game. It's a, yeah, it's a very um, – it can be a very, um, very uh, draining industry but also a very rewarding industry. Yeah, so. yeah. How's your training going at the moment? Like personally, like not, not PT, your, your own, like your own, your own training. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot better actually. So, yeah. um, last year, well, mate. thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, last year I definitely hit a, uh, bump in the road. I had oh. to dedicate a lot of time to my own studies. Um, mm -hmm. I had to dedicate a lot of time to family matters. I had to dedicate yeah. a lot of time to my own household as well. Um, and that meant that at that point I just didn't have the energy to train. Um, I really tried to, I really did, but it just got to a point where I was like, ah, oh, just, I, I'm not 
don't have the energy for this right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then as soon as kind of uni finished by the end of the year, and I got through a lot of the the challenges that I was going through. I had a breathing, a lot of breathing space. It was like, cool, we can, again, same thing as when I did the first time, let's slowly get back into the gym. Let's just go yeah. do a light session. And something I used to think was light, I'd go back and I'm like, wow, that was challenging. Shit, mm -hmm. how unfit have I gotten? So mm -hmm. then it was kind of trying to, trying to manage that, you know, understand where I'm at now and like, and accept that. Be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not as, nowhere near as fit as what I was. Um, let's get back into it because, yeah. you know, I can't change that. I'm here where I am, that first part of acceptance. And from there, you know, try and drive it home. And I've been doing that probably since, um, let's say I've been in the gym again consistently since November. Um, and I've ha been having a lot more direction now. So I've nice. gone back to kettlebell training. Um, okay. And the goal is by the end of the year to compete in a, a Giravoy um, sport uh, lifting competition. Gear avoid just means kettlebell in Russian. So okay. kettlebell sport. Oh. So kettlebell lifting. That's, that's the goal like, where we, I'm yeah. going in at the moment. So I've been training for that for the past two months. Yeah, nice. Nice, mate. Are you still playing football as well? Uh, no. So, yeah. um, unfortunately not. I loved, um, I love playing. Um, yeah. played for four years, I think when I was down in the Shire. Yeah. Um, played on Sundays. It was great. I uh, loved every moment. I was in one of the lower teams though, but because I just had that fitness, um, I just would run for the full 90 minutes. Yeah. So yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, but no, since going back to uni, I've had to put that on hold. Oh, fair um, fair. I thought about going back possibly this year, but I think still with the new job, I'm like, I oh, will just wait and see what happens, but yeah. maybe next year. Cause it's definitely something that I love. Um, I love doing and I love the, the being part of the team too. I miss yeah, it a lot. You, can't, you can't beat it sometimes. That just that team, that team atmosphere and that team spirit when you get a win. Just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Love mate, it. nothing beats it. Yeah. When you're in the sheds yeah. if you've got a team song as well. Yeah. Like even if it like we used to have like it was the most childish kind of team song. Like it was literally like um, you know, we'd, I think part of it was like rockets, rockets, go, go, go. Like something just that made no sense but we do just something to sing with beer in hand after a game you know such a such an aussie thing i found just i don't know football teams singing a song after the game yeah 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 <laughs> oh, i love it i love it though i love it i saw that you've signed back up mate i have my, yeah i'm uh, I've, well i've been trolling out in pre-season for a, a team uh, north melbourne and north mate north melbourne trojans so yeah no i've, I've signed um yeah and it's, it's still in pre still in pre-season but yeah in just for kind of what you mentioned just enjoying enjoying being back playing and uh, that you know just being part of a team um yeah so i'm looking forward to the season ahead which awesome. is uh, which is good um wait well, thanks for just running through all of that it's been, been been great to chat just a couple more sort of things for me what's um you've touched on a lot of this already but what's you know what's the future hold for you mate what what can i expect to sort of see and hear from you Oof. in the next year or so what's, what's yeah what's look in the next year i'd probably like to ramp up a little bit more um, personal training, um, yeah. focus a little bit more on that at the gym, um, but mainly I think um, still just smashing studies. That's the priority. Yeah. Um, as much as I love being back in the PT game, I'm not um, I'm not doing anything in terms of trying to promote myself specifically. Yeah. It's more now I'm thinking about promoting the gym I work at rather than just myself because that's the yeah. way that they've structured it there. You know, I'm employed by the gym. Um, instead of subcontracted where, you know, I'm a business that I work at the gym. So mm. that's a definitely worked well, a lot better for me. So, you know, I'll probably try and um, help the gym grow where I'm working at now as much as I can. Um, try yep. and help other other trainers in different aspects while also kind of learning myself. We've got a lot yep. of very educated uh, PTs. We've got a lot of physios and chiros on board. And uh, probably I'm probably around the smartest bunch I am now than I ever have. Um, I'm trying yep. to take advantage of that, trying to pick their yeah. brains and good place to, to be. Yeah, definitely a good place mm -hmm. to grow and learn, but yeah, just trying to dedicate myself there and, um, yeah, just keep pursuing studies, man. Just, uh, cool. get a bit of a taste for what I'm doing. Maybe get a bit of a un better understanding of where I want to go as well. Very good. Very good. Mate, one final question from me. Um, and I, you know, I've been asking this a little bit on the show and it, this is it's appreciate it's quite a broad question, but I'm always something I'm trying to hone in on. I'm always thinking about, um, success, right? Mm -hmm. so what, what success means to different people in different industries and different walks of life. Mm -hmm. And you can take this whichever way you like, but what does success mean 
to you? I've, I've actually been asked that before, and I've got a little bit of goosebumps here to think about it just now. Um, success is obviously a very hard one to define because it's definitely subjective, right? Success yeah. is for whatever it is to the person. Um, I think for me, honestly, success is just when I set myself a goal and achieve that goal. And it doesn't have to be a big goal by okay. any means. It doesn't need to be, you know, have a million dollars in the bank account. No, like that's not really what I'm talking about. Success means that today, so I can have, I've got short-term, medium-term, long-term success. The short-term where today is I completed my to-do list, where I sent off those emails, I did the washing up, you know, I did, I ticked the things off the list that I know I'm going to need in the long term. You know, um, you know it, success literally, yeah, like I said, sometimes it's unstacking a dishwasher when I really don't want yeah. to, or I've <laughs> laid in bed and I'm like, I didn't brush my teeth. Mm. You mean I got to get out of bed just to go brush my teeth? And it's like, yeah, you do because you don't want a cavity. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you've got to go look after yourself. Yeah. All right, fine. You know, as much as I'm comfortable in bed, all right, get back out. It takes two minutes, and I really don't want to, but you know, go do it. Um, and then you've got more of your kind of medium goals as well. So, you know, with all those daily things or weekly things that I set out for myself to do, um, it's kind of like uh, so for me. Um, every semester, for every unit, I want to get a distinction in all my all my units that I do. And that's the goal yep. that I set for myself. And then I kind of backtrack on that. It's like, oh, okay, how many hours a week do I need to work on that? Okay, 10 hours a week per unit. Well, let's put that in the schedule. What am I doing to achieve those 10 hours? Where am I working yep. to do those 10 hours? Um, yep. So success, like I said, is just having something written down that I want to do and doing mm -hmm. it. And like I said, yep. it can be something small like brushing my teeth. It can be something a bit bigger like, okay, getting a distinction or you know, writing up this training program or, you know, getting X yep. amount of clients. Um, and then long-term, it can be this, what I've got at the moment. My long-term goal was asked this last year, where do you self, see yourself in three years? And I looked, looked at the person in the interview and I said, graduating, that's it. There was no ifs or buts. It was just, I just want to graduate. It's all right. You just cut there, I think. All oh, right. So a Sorry. bit of a, a longer term um, yeah. goal I was asked is, you know, where do you self see yourself in three years? It was graduating. Yeah. That's it. doesn't need to be with this or that or, you know, uh, yeah. being in this position, you know, getting accepted into this role. It's like, no, three yeah. years, I just want to graduate. That's yeah. where I'm going to be. Um, yeah. So, yeah, just that success to me is having something in mind. It's having something that I want and then achieving that. Yeah. And obviously, I think it's got to mean something, though. Like, it can't just be for me to to write it on there. It's got to mean, like, okay, what does that mean to you, though, finishing uni? What does it mean to you, though? Because um, even, obviously, you've got success in different areas where it can be um, family life, you know. Okay, I want to go visit my family more often. It can be family, uh, friends, sorry, as well. It's like I want to be more social. You know, I want to yeah. go hang out with my friends more often. I want to be more involved in their lives. Um, yeah. You know, it can be things obviously like financial too. How much money do you want in your bank account by the end of the year? When I was working full time, I had that goal. It was like, all right, I think at the time it was like, I want 10 grand in my bank account and my savings. I never had that money in my life at the time. And I was I literally worked it out every week um, is what's my expenses? How much money am I earning while I'm full time? If I do yep. that every week for to the end of the year, I think I did this in like February. How much money will I have? And it was literally bang on ten grand, considering all my holidays nice. I was paying for, budgeted for everything in the whole year. And sure enough, by the end of the year, yeah. you know, I got there. So, you know, there's a lot of different areas where you can achieve success. It's just kind of yeah. trying to, for me, write it down. Number yeah. one, number two, writing out the plan. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. It's, you're very like. Well, I guess I'm learning. You're very like gold. You know. But goals are so important to you, right? Goals in, and also the way you, the way you've been doing that. I love the um, the reverse engineered part of hitting a goal. So this is the goal. How do we get there? You know, breaking it down so it's the X, and then how, how do I do that week by week, month to month kind of thing? Um, I think I might have just lost you there. Sorry, John. Yeah, got you. All right. Yeah, got you. Yeah. So, uh, mate, thanks. Um, thanks so much for coming on and um and having a chat with me 